Hello everyone tuning in to watch this video tour. Thank you for tuning in to another 5D guide event. This guide takes you around New York City and explores the creative vocabulary that we have on display in our public spaces. Uh, there's a lot to see in New York. New York is constantly changing constantly evolving. I want to give a special shout out for people who have participated on in-person tours uh, with me. In-person tours are back in New York. As some of you might know, I, uh, I work as a guide for Central Park. If you are in the city or will be visiting, definitely check out my website 5dguy.com where I'll be listing the events that will be coming up. Uh, Events are listed at a modest fee of around $15 per person and all proceeds go towards the maintenance of that very much beloved space that we have in New York. I'm also presenting virtual tours as well, so if you're not able to make it to the city just yet, we are uh, offering virtual tours and I'll be listing those as well. Today, for this video tour, and I hope it doesn't take too long, but we'll see uh, how long the battery lasts on this camera that I'm using. I am in Midtown Manhattan, the avenue that we have here, and some of you might have already determined and seen where we are. We are on 5th Avenue at around 51st Street, between 50th Street and 51st Street. Directly behind me here is the iconic St. Patrick's Cathedral. It's not the topic of today's video tour, but it's a beautiful building to reference and I'm spanning 360 degrees so that you get a general sense as to where we are. Again, many of you might recognize today we are going to explore a very special exhibition. New York is constantly changing. Uh, many of you already might have experienced a Rockefeller Center before. Some of these sites are very familiar to maybe a lot of you. But there's also new things to see. Uh, every so often, every season, uh, the organization that manages Rockefeller Center, Tishman Speyer, organizes public art exhibits and other, uh, other organizations put up art exhibits as well. This directly in front here is the iconic Atlas uh, statue in, Central, in uh, Rockefeller Center. There are several works of art throughout the complex, but every so often they put up new exhibits. I'm going to go across the street here. I'm going directly across. I'm technically uh, just connecting so that we could take a closer look. And immediately we can see that there's an exhibit there of a Lego sculpture depicting Woody. And this is done by the, uh, by the Lego store, I believe. There will be others that will be checking out, but we're here to take a look at this particular exhibition over here. This is uh, by an artist from New York, and uh, what he's doing, he's basically taking classical imagery and giving it these Chimera character, basically superimposing the classical figures with traditional African statuary. And this is just a photo, but there are sculptures as well. And we'll be taking a look at some of those. And so far, this has been the largest uh, exhibition that, or temporary exhibition that has been organized at Rockefeller Center. In previous seasons, there have been other exhibitions as well. And uh, I have uh, created some virtual tours, some video tours for those as well. And those are listed on my website. If you connect to 5dguy.com to the particular page where this virtual tour is posted, which is included in the description uh, section, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or other social media, you'll be able to connect to that page and see those previous exhibitions from previous years. A lot of creative vocabulary to explore. This is another image over here, another classical form and uh, also some traditional uh, African figurative vocabulary for the head in this case here as it was the case with the other statue that we saw. I hope the audio is coming out okay in this particular presentation. There's Atlas. And this is the international building. There are a total of 14 buildings. And inside, if we go in, we can see 
one of those exhibits or other works of art that are part of this very exhibit as well. Here's another statue. This one sort of looks like it's missing half of its body or half of its torso. torso. There is also some literature accompanying the displays as well and here you can read the name of the artist. Samford Biggers is his name. Samford was born in California but now lives in New York and he has exhibited in, uh, in museums here in the city. This is another of his forms. And again, what appears is that for the most part the heads of the more traditional classical statues it's what it's what has been replaced this merging of forms of traditions from Africa and uh, Europe is what gives these uh, sculptures these creations this camera quality that they have There's another permanent art exhibit over here that consists, I forget the name of the artist who designed this, but I believe he's from Japan. There's also scaffolding here in the lobby of the International Building. There's a lot of construction going on at Rockefeller Center. Down this hall you take elevators that bring you to the office spaces in this building. And here's another figure similar to the one that we saw just moments ago. This one is displayed in this sort of like desert background, which makes it very interesting. The figure itself, to me, doesn't appear too Western. If anything, it looks Asian. But it's hard to tell because half of the figure is uh, missing. I'm going to exit back on Fifth Avenue and take a look at the largest a sculpture. The largest sculpture is called Oracle and it's displayed right along right at the entrance or right at the main entrance to Rockefeller Center from this vantage point here we have a very nice view of St. Patrick's Cathedral. St. Patrick's Cathedral is the largest Catholic Church in the United States it's the seat of the Catholic faith here in New York. You can see the American flag to the left and the flag of the Vatican on the other side there to the right. This is looking south. We're walking along the western side of Fifth Avenue but very soon. Let's go across the street over here so that we can take a look at the Oracle that is displayed at Rockefeller Center from the other side over here, from the eastern side of Fifth Avenue. This is Saks Fifth Avenue. Saks Fifth Avenue is a luxury retailer here in New York. That's where you'll find all of the brand, all of the brand names. This here is 50th Street. 50th Street looking west. And here we go. Where across the street we have the Channel Gardens at Rockefeller Center. And already you can see that monumental sculpture. which is the biggest creation by Mr. Biggers. This has been here since uh, May of this year, I believe. It was supposed to be displayed last season, last year in 2020, but because of the ongoing pandemic, uh, the exhibition was delayed and uh, here we have it today. Today is June 28th and this is going to be on view 
up until tomorrow, actually the 29th. It's called Oracle. And it's uh, 25 feet tall and weighs uh, 15,280 pounds. And it's made out of bronze. And again, this is uh, a creation that is part of a series that the artist is working on. And again, it's merging European statues and African masks. And the idea is to have an interrogation of sculptural arts, history, and power. Uh, the work is the largest camera, the largest hybrid uh, statue. The artist told a newspaper called Art News that he drew inspiration from uh, that he drew inspiration from ancient Greek, uh, from ancient Greek statuary, specifically the uh, an iconic statue of Zeus which happened to be a wonder of the ancient world uh, created in, uh, I forget the year, 525 BC which was a wonder of the ancient world and then he also took uh, he also took uh, the vocabulary from uh, imagery and statuary from Luba and Maasai cultures in Africa. There are some political overtones as well. I'm now going to go across the street here, looking both ways. Well, technically we only have to look one way because traffic on Fifth Avenue flows uh, south. We can see there are two lions at the base. The figure is dressed in a robe and sitting on this, what appears to be a throne, a very elaborate chair, holding a torch on its left hand. And the face of the figure is enlarged and again borrows from this traditional African visual vocabulary. There's a sign by the base of the sculpture giving us the name of the artist, the name of the work, and a little insight about the exhibit. There are also some QR codes that you can connect to that will give you information. And also a dynamic where you can ask a question too. You can basically ask this oracle a question and you will get an answer back. Uh, an answer that will be communicated by an unnamed celebrity. So in that regard, I think that's a pretty unique, if you will, unique feature. As often we look at art, we see it, but we don't get to interact with it. But this work we can. This is the back of the sculpture. Notice the uh, the hair, the way it's dressed as well. This time of the year the Channel Gardens is looking very green and there's this uh, rainbow flag, rainbow strip that has been installed here and this is relating to uh, the LGBT community. This time of the year America and many cities all over the world are celebrating what is called a Pride. In fact today, uh, June 28th, is the anniversary of the Stonewall Riots. The Stonewall Riots happened in uh, the late 1960s in Greenwich Village here in New York and they were the first time, those protests were really the first times when the LGBT community protested uh, the status quo basically where a group of transvestites were gathering at a club in the village and uh, they were gathering at a club in the village and for the first time they, re they resisted the police telling them that they couldn't assemble 
at that particular space. So since then, a movement has organized and today many cities all over the world celebrate what is called Pride. There are flags installed uh, here at the Rockefeller Center complex and these two rainbows pretty much that have been painted or uh, taped to the ground over here. Now back to the statue here, we can, uh, from this vantage point, we can uh, juxtapose it and compare it to the verticality of St. Patrick's Cathedral on the other side. That's the southern spire of the church. And here I think it echoes in a nice way, in a nice creative way with the verticality of the way that the, that the hair is coiffed. Again, the throne itself is uh, decorated with these motifs, repeating motifs. Very visually stimulating, something very interesting to see. Maybe something that inspires a lot of thought, maybe. In people who see it, some might find it visually interesting. Others might find it even ugly. I particularly tend to find it interesting. I don't know if I would like to see something like this on permanent display here, but nevertheless it's something nice to explore. There are also some, of course, political overtones to this dynamic of taking traditional African uh, visual vocabulary and uh, merging it with traditional Western European uh, designs. But maybe that's a topic for someone else to explore. I just basically pretty much like to present the basic formal aspects of exhibitions throughout New York and inspire uh, people to keep connected to this city if you've visited before so that you can see pretty much how the environment is looking nowadays. I'm going to take one look around, get closer to uh, Fifth Avenue here so that we can get a full 360 degree perspective of this monument that again will only be here up until tomorrow. If you're still watching, I thank you for keeping your attention. Again, uh, log on to the website. I've included the link to the homepage for this video presentation on my website where you'll have links to the previous exhibitions that have been exhibited here in previous seasons. If you have any insights or questions, uh, let me know in the comments sections and keep connected uh, So I'll be making more video tours. And if you are in New York or will be visiting, also check on the website for those in-person events. I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon or morning, depending where you are and when you are watching this video. Bye-bye.